Today's meeting here is on how to make a profit with SEO. So what I'll be going over today is kind of just, again, almost SEO 101 in terms of just the go-to factors that you need to make sure are being taken care of with your online presence, in particular, your website and your Google My Business or Google Business Profile, as it's now called, um, just to ensure that all those kind of check boxes are marked and that you are as optimized as efficiently as possible, and thus will result in rankings and making a profit from your SEO. Because again, if you're not ranking at the top of the page and on top of the maps, then it's almost like you have a you have online presence that's in the back of the phone book or it's just never going to be found. And so we want to make sure that you are profiting from the tactics that you are implying or that you're outsourcing um, just to make sure that you're getting the best ROI possible. Okay. So and this is our online mastery method that we kind of talk about pretty frequently here um, in, in our different webinars and topics, but the, with these different aspects of your online marketing, your online presence, um, if you have these in tune, you will be really rolling in terms of making sure new customers come in and then they come back. And so what will we focus on today, again, is going to be primarily on the SEO aspect and making sure that it is being run efficiently. So we'll be going over the latest updates with the Google algorithm, um, things that you may have put in place in the past that could be hurting your ranking. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how to optimize your website using, using um, kind of our new formula there. And then brand new tests that we've done that can boost your ranking overnight. Okay. And so the first leading question is always going to be, does SEO still matter? And so in the chat, if you guys can throw in the number one, if you feel like SEO matters and number two, if you feel like it doesn't. All right. So we got some ones, ones. Okay, ho hopefully it is one. I mean, that's, that's why hopefully people are here is that they, they find it important, but they want to make sure that it, that it is optimized. Um, if it's two um, and you just didn't share that, then hopefully I can, change your mind slowly but surely and um, help you see um, the benefit of having good SEO done on, on your on your website. And so just to show some some live examples in terms of what, what we'll be talking about, what you're kind of visualizing. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And so that's primarily going to be with Google. And so it's, it's when you type in certain keywords like auto repair and the location that you're based or even just auto repair on its own, you want to be in this top three of the maps. Because again, if you're not in the top three, it's a very, very small chance that you'll get clicked on. And so you want to be featured here in this top three. Everyone wants immediate gratification. Not very many times are you going to click on the more business button. So you want to make sure that's very easy for them to access and find you. So this is a live example um, of, of one of our shops in terms of what, what you want it to look like. Um, you want to make sure that it's like a big, warm, welcoming photo um, there. Uh, just, just making sure that, again, it, it looks like a friendly environment. You want certain calls to action in terms of phone, phone numbers and making online appointments there easily attainable as well. And then also then you, you then in turn, you want to make sure that it is ranking at the top. You want things to match in terms of what's being labeled here, what's being presented on the website and across the board and in all of the web. And so here, here you see in this example here, we're there in the, the top spot there. And so here... So 71% of clicks go to the organic listing. So that leaves about 20 to 30% that come from the Google ads that you'll typically see on the very top. And so again, ads are a great maneuver because it, it helps you get to the very top of a Google listing. And, but again, not everyone loves clicking on ads. And so this is, this is where organic is still very, very powerful in terms of the amount of clicks and traffic that you can still garner to your website, to your my business and just clicking on the directions or phone calls straight straight from here. So it's all very powerful just being able to rank well in, in this top section. Okay. And 67% come from these first five listings here. So being ranked in the top three and then being ranked in the top two organically. Primarily more and more each day, um, maps are kind of taking over in terms of taking that, that click share. Because again, um, People love going to the maps. They love seeing the directions. They love seeing the reviews. And so this is this is kind of taking up majority of the space in terms of where you want to be able to rank. But um, you, there's just different different aspects that we're going to be talking about to make sure that you are ranking kind of in both places because being ranked here is very important and kind of correlating to being ranked up here. Well, and so then the yes, SEO definitely still matters, but you can't rely on organic alone. Like I mentioned, there's there's other other needs um, that need to be done in terms of ranking. And 
leveraging ads are also a good and powerful way in order to kind of accommodate while you're making sure your SEO is in line and starting to, and Google starting to recognize what you're doing to help you rank better, but it's not an overnight thing. And so um, you, you want to make sure that you're doing kind of every aspect that you can to optimize this. And so the five biggest changes that we've seen. And so number one, listing every single service you provide in your GBP could be hurting you. And so I, I know within Google and, and listing your services is a, a whole abundance of options that you're able to select. And then even on top of that, you can make custom service listings. And so I've seen it where some people have hundreds listed there and that is definitely not ideal because Google is starting to see that as spamming back. Before it, it used to be you, you want to put as many as possible and it will help you rank. And so, but now you want to limit the amount of services just to the important ones that you actually are servicing. You don't need to use different words to mean the same thing in order to just list more things down. You want to keep it simple. And number two, low quality of links pointing back to your website can hurt you. And so links are what we call backlinks or citations. These are things that you're able to put your website URL or you're able to have a word that, does, that then is clickable that then opens up back to your website. And so this is a very powerful way in order to build, again, more trust within, within Google's algorithm. But there are some that are very low quality. And there's, there's ways that people um, even offer to sell links and you can purchase them maybe from some websites um, like Fiverr or something like that, where you, yes, maybe you may find that one person that is really good at doing it, but usually the, the quality is pretty poor. A lot of the links come from websites that are outside of even the US. And so you wanna make sure that um, it's good, good links that, that are gonna build some power and trust back to your website. Cause it doesn't matter if you can, if it's a spammy link, that's only going to hurt you at the end of the day. The number three, so your Google business profile posts need to include relevant services. And so you don't want to just, first off, you want to at least post. And so I know at times these can be tricky to find in terms of where, how to, what, who even looks at the posts. And, but at the end of the day, Google wants you to use their product. And so you want to make sure that you're at least posting, but then you want to post on services that you are actually offering and are important to the shop. And number four, uh, site speed absolutely matters. And so, yes, at the, at, at the end of the day, it's not just if you have the fastest site that you'll rank the best, but how it correlates is that if your site is fast, people tend to stay on the website because it's loading. I don't know about you, but if you, when I'm on my phone and I'm trying to open up a website and it takes forever to load, I immediately try to find something different. And so if your website is that way, uh, where again, it's just a, a slow website, um, you want to make sure that you're doing different things to optimize that. And I'll go over a website that you're able to use today in terms of just, again, it's one of Google's websites that you can just plug in your URL and see how fast your site speed is. And hopefully that you can, it even gives you suggestions and things that you can do to improve the speed, both mobile and desktop. And obviously mobile being very important with so many people using their phone nowadays. And then number five, again, perfect segue, your website has to be mobile friendly. Because again, 60 to 70% of, of your visitors are probably coming from their phone nowadays. And so you wanna make sure that it's very easy for them to use use um, your website there when, when they do get to it through Google My Business or their organic search. Um, again, the longer that people are on your website, the stickier your website looks and the more trustworthy that Google thinks it is. And thus it will rank you higher. So at the end of the day, Google is a business. They wanna make sure people keep using Google. And so the best way to do that is to provide very beneficial information when people do use it. And that's by showing the most trustworthy results in there just through their algorithm. All right, so we'll take a deeper dive here at, at um, number one, but first I wanted to stop here really quickly just to see if anyone has any questions. So again, feel free to drop it in the chat if you do have any, um, and I am again, I'll do my best to keep peeking at the chat and seeing if anyone does have any questions um, and, and answer those as we go along. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw it in there. But if not, I'll, I'll keep on going. So number one, like I mentioned, listing every single service you provide in your GV could be hurting you. And so most auto repair shops will list every service plus, again, the same service multiple times in different words, just because they think, oh, it's different keywords, so it will help. And that's great that they've done the research in order to find more keywords, but based on Google, Google's algorithm now, it is, there's no benefit. If anything, it hurts it a little bit. So you want to make sure you narrow it down to maybe your 10 to 15 services that you do offer. 
um, and then making sure that that is optimized. So yeah, like I mentioned, it used to be commonplace and it seemed harmless, but now it can affect you not being as good. Because again, Google's really cracking down on anything that seems spammy or uh, untrustworthy. And, and so you wanna make sure that you are not giving off that appearance in any shape or form. And another thing I don't think I'm gonna touch in, I, I don't have a, like a slide that touches in on this, but when your Google business profile business name is listed, you want it to strictly only be your business name. And yes, absolutely adding in a bunch of keywords into the name does help your rankings in the very immediate short term. But if Google catches on that, that is not your business name, because obviously if you're saying you are Bill's auto repair shop that does BMW repair and Ford repair and, and, Mercedes, and you just are listing all these different vehicles and types, it's like, you're, that's not your business name. And so you want to make sure that it, it is labeled only as what your business name is. And that will help you link to different citations on the web and just keep everything again, very clean and, and trustworthy in Google's eyes. You're not just trying to spam in a bunch of keywords, but Yes, absolutely. It's it's one of the top ways that does help you rank in the very immediate short term, but it's not worth your business getting flagged and suspended for it because you have all these extra words that aren't really your business name. So, so just again, that, that's my my two cents on that part. But and through our testing, um, we've seen that limiting the number of services you list on your GDP could help you rank higher overnight in the maps. And so just a small change that can go a long way. So again, take a look at all the services you have there. I know often, Google even throw in some new recommendations that they have. Just make sure to um, really keep that clean and, ma and making sure that there's only um, a certain select amount of services that you have on there that then also ties to what you're offering on your website. And this helps you again, all around stay relevant in, in Google's eyes. So number two, uh, number two, we're gonna be talking about um, backlinks. And so in, in more, more in particular, low quality, irrelevant ones pointing back to your site. So it used to be beforehand, it used to be just all about links and just as many links as you can find. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it points back to your website, it will, it will bring you power. Because again, within its Google's algorithm, but it, it, it just used to register as many as more links, the more, more popular, more trustworthy it seemed. But now Google's way smarter than that. And so you want to make sure that the links that are actually pointing back to you are beneficial to the site and that it it, it gains helps gain traction in a positive direction and that those websites also have trust and power within within their site. Because again, if you're creating, I've seen a bunch of back, people have backlinks before where they created all these blog post sites that like on um, some of those just generic blog builder websites. And then they just build, they build something that then points back to their website from all these generic blog uh, blog post listings. And that does absolutely nothing because all those, all those little one page sites that are not bringing any sort of power and Google knows this. And so you want to make sure that that's just not the case that that's not being pointed back to you. And then you can check out your links um, through just different softwares. Um, one is called Ahrefs that, that we typically Ahrefs as a A H R E F S.com. Um, that one definitely costs money though. Um, so there's also within your Google search console, if you have it set up through your website, you can check out links that are pointing to your site there um, in terms of just doing just seeing what sort of websites are pointing back to you and then you can help clean that up you can help say like no to some links pointing back to you and things like that and so the most recent update address um address this and now it's all about quality and relevance and so you're going to have to review your link profile to find these bad ones and again like i mentioned you can visit some of those sites just to see uh, what those links are and you can remove or disavow is what they kind of label it as in terms of if you don't want a link pointing back to you. Because again, you do not want bad ones pointing back to you. That only hurts you. And then the step further than that to get a little bit, a little bit technical, but you want to work to diversify what we call anchor text. And so anchor text is the word that is then clickable within an article or a blog. So say your business name again, for the sake of doing this is Bill's Auto Repair. And so with if Bill's Auto Repair is the anchor, is the is the clickable kind of word, then that is what then points back to your website. That is what we call an anchor text. So typically we want anchor text to be keywords. We don't want it just to be your business name because your business name, obviously that, that's gonna help build brand awareness and we want people to type in your business name in Google. But we wanna also capture generic words that people are typing in in terms of their keywords like auto repair, mechanic, auto repair shop, oil change, brake repair, things like that. Or people are just typing in, trying to find the shop near them. But the more that you have anchor text of those words that are pointing back to the site, 
the stronger and more relevantly and higher likelihood that you'll rank high for these types of keywords. And so number three, um, GBP posts need to include relevant services. And so Google Maps um, had a lot of changes in the last year. And so one of those being GBP posts. And so again, I know a lot of people um, don't even do the post, they don't have the time, which I totally understand. Um, but you wanna make, you wanna try to at least do maybe twice a month or once a week in terms of posting on there and just posting about a service that you're offering in the area. And here's a link to the website, boom, make that post. And so you can do that through your Google business profile in, in the, there's a post section there. And there's, there's different, um, different almost topics or category, subcategories that you can select in terms of the type of posts that you wanna make. And just typically um, just choose like the new information one. Um, and then you can kind of make it just almost like a, it's like a mini blog post or a mini social media post in a sense of where you're just putting some information about how you're doing a certain service in the area. So again, if you focus, but if you're like a transmission only shop, you wanna make sure that your services that you're listing and talking about are only transmissions. You're not talking about how you also do tire replacements or brake repairs, something different. Just keep it to what you're trying to focus on or um, say that you have a new technician on board and they specialize in certain things, make sure that then you're, you're pushing for those elements within your posts. So then that creates a higher likelihood that you're ranking better for those, in, especially in the short and near term. And if you're just a European only shop, make sure that you're only posting about how you fix and do European cars. Do not start mingling in some other makes and models that will just start confusing Google. So you wanna make sure you keep it exactly how um, you wanna do this. And then again, when you want mainly, mainly work on breaks, don't make posts about AC repairs and so on and so forth. Like in the summer, you typically, that's where you want to make posts about AC repairs. Um, fall is typically where I see breaks because I know there's like um, breaks for breasts and some different promotions that are run during the fall. Um, so you want to just make sure, yeah, you're, you're keeping those things in line. And so GVP posts, again, th this is a, an interesting map that we found in terms of GMB signals by correlation and so it, it, to rank. And so 30% um, is affected by the posts that you make, 26% re in regards to reviews with keywords in them. And so it really helps when you get those reviews that people actually write, write words in there. And, um, and then on top of that, when you respond back, you throw in keywords as well. That, that will all really help in terms of ranking there. Um, the amount of calls that you're, you're Google business profile is getting is also a big factor. And then we have photo uploads. You want to just always upload photos, citations, um, and XF data. Um, again, this is a little bit more technical, but again, as you see, some of these bigger ones are really um, easy to, to be able to accomplish. And so number four, uh, site speed matters. And so here, as you can see, you want to type in page speed insights to then find and track how fast you're, um, you're performing on just the different platforms. So again, if you type in Google page speed insights, it'll take you to that first option. Um, I'm there and it'll be like this. This is a, it was a platform that Google had created. And so you just type it, type in your URL, copy and paste, and it'll spit out some data for you in terms of mobile and desktop and your, your speed performance. And then it gives you some suggestions down here. And so you want to make sure that you are checking that just to, again, make sure you're staying on top of that speed. Because if, people, if your website is starting to load slowly, especially on mobile, um, that's not good in Google's eyes. You want to make sure that it's very easy in terms of site speed to, to load there. And it'll help with um, kind of that trust that you're trying to build with Google consistently. So how fast your website loads plays a huge role in your rankings. Again, just based on the amount of time that it creates people being on your website, it creates a very low chance of bounce rate because bounce rate is how Google sees that if people are going onto your website and leaving within five seconds, that's a considered a bounce. And the more you're getting of those, and if it's a very high percentage, then the more spammy that your website and your just online presence appears to Google. So you want to decrease that as much as possible. And mobile and desktop must be, you want to make sure that you're looking at both. And number five, your website has to be mobile friendly. So we'll go over some stats in terms of what we've seen. So 68% of website visits globally come from the mobile device. So again, pretty big percentage of people that are coming from their phone. So if you had a website for a while um, that you just haven't bothered changing, more than likely it is not um, mobile friendly. So you wanna make sure things like having a, a tap friendly phone number um, and 
again, just easy maneuverability with, within the website, the calls to actions being placed at the, at the top, things like that are all done on the mobile phone to make sure, you make sure you're, you're viewing and checking that. And so if your website's not more friendly, it affects your rank. And on top of that, your conversions. And so again, if you did all that hard work in terms of even getting there, you want to make sure that it converts, that you're getting the calls and you're getting those, um, those appointment fill outs. And so check that, make sure that that is taking place. Make sure that it loads properly, that there's no like overlapping text and design. Sometimes it just, it happens where it just gets a little weird in terms of how, how it loads and populates on the phone. So you want to make sure that, um, your web person is double checking on those things. And so some of that, what, what else has changed? So I guess before I go uh, into a little bit more of that, are there any questions or any thoughts that I can help answer? Is this, is, has this been helpful? <laughs> yes, okay, good, this has been, it's been helpful. Um, someone wants to know a little bit more about backlinks. Okay, um, so I guess to, Backlinks is more what I consider the offsite SEO. So SEO is kind of broken up into on-site and off-site SEO. So on-site SEO is primarily stuff on the website that you that you optimize and in regards to the content that's there, how photos are saved on the website, some of the, the back-end things like schema, meta descriptions, kind of how Google reads the website and then can then properly um, digest what you do, where you do it, how to kind of then correlate what you should rank for. Um, but then a really important aspect is offsite. So onsite is kind of that, that, up, that one time deal when you're having the website person build your, your site, they're, they're updating those things, hopefully. And then there's not much that has to be done on the website after that. Um, there's there's going to be tweaks here and there, but it's not an overwhelmingly amount of time that needs to be taken. So what should be done is the offsite things, building those links and, and building those citations. And so the backlinks, like I mentioned, are on blogs or articles, and then citations are just online directories. And so that could be your Facebook page, your Yelp page, Yellow Pages, anything where you have your business name, address, and phone number listed, how you have it set up in new Google Business Profile. And that's kind of called your NAP. Um, if you see the acronym, uh, name, address, phone number, that's what you want to have matching across the board with your citations. And so all those things are really important in terms of ranking in, in Google and, and thus getting more traffic, getting more calls, et cetera. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw those in the, in the chat, but I'll keep going. Um, so what else has changed? Old fashioned SEO, no longer effective. Like I mentioned, um, there's different um updates that they called panda pigeon penguin all, all those different things um but now there's a big involvement in user experience and so user experience again is heavily consisted of site speed and and then maneuverability of how long they stay on the website so you want to make sure that if people are staying on longer you want to throw on throw in things like a youtube video and again google owns youtube so if you're going to put a video on there i recommend it being a link to you to a youtube video um that 10 will tend to help it a little bit better. Um, now, video will definitely play a factor in slowing down the website because video is obviously um, a little bit more robust, but um, having one, two here or there, this definitely plays a benefit um, in terms of people staying on the website, seeing seeing things like that. So make sure that you are factoring that in as possibility for yourself. And the new SA approach, like I mentioned, requires a heavy focus on user experience optimization. So what are some of the new ranking factors? Just kind of uh, to break that down. So CTR, so click through rate is key. So in terms of how people maneuver through the website, um, if, if Google can really register all these things and how long they're being on there, or if they're clicking on the phone number, filling out a form, it sees all these things and seeing that it's a benefit. So you wanna make sure that those things are being tracked and happening. Scroll rate is essential. So are they scrolling down once they get to the home page? Um, is it mobile friendly? Um, thing, things along those lines. Um, time on page, like I already mentioned, is, is a pretty big deal in terms of how Google can see how long people are on the page. And again, you can track that through your Google Analytics, make sure that's that's linked to your website itself. And then also show you things like bounce rate, which um, should be watched closely because that again, these all play a factor into how they consider user experience on someone's website. And then number of citations, reviews, and relevant links. And then reviews, um, I didn't really touch on this too much, but Google reviews are going to be big. It's not the end-all be-all in terms of if you have the most reviews, you rank at the top. It's not how it works. Um, 
but it definitely plays a factor. I, 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 would, I would consider it kind of the number, the number three factor of ranking in maps. Um, but again, people love reading reviews. I know I'm, I'm guilty of that in terms of before I go somewhere, buy a product, I, I like reading the reviews, seeing what other people thought of both the goods and the bad. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're, you have a ability to get more of these. And so big way that we help some of our shops is through leveraging text messages. And so if that's not something you're already leveraging, highly recommend it. And if you need help setting something like that up, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we can get something really quick set up for you. Make sure that you can start at least having that text conversation with some of your customers. So they come back and then page speed. And so what's new with the SEO formula, so figuring out some of the most important keywords based on your service, service area, and search volume. And so there's different tools out there. Um, there's, you can just do keyword research tool on, on Google. You'll be able to find some things. There's some free options. Obviously, those are not going to be as robust and give you some of the best um, information. Again, the most powerful tool that we have really, really enjoyed using is Ahrefs. But um, if you're really just even tied to your Google search console in terms of how you're ranking, and if it's even being done minimally right, you'll at least start peering within the top 100 for keywords. And thus, then you start to get data in terms of how many searches are being done per month on certain, certain keywords and phrases. And then you want to make sure that your website is optimized for those most important ones that again, are getting the most search volume, also ones that aren't as difficult to rank for, things like that. So here are some tools, Google Keyword Tool, WordStream, and even a, a really good one is if you're doing Google Ads, because then that will show, will show you exactly how many times that certain keywords are being searched and um, where you're ranking for them, things like that. And so set up a great website with unique pages targeting those keywords. And so I've seen many websites that they have a services page, but then they just literally have that, that services page is the page where they have kind of almost like a bullet point and breakdown of the services they offer. Um, it's better than nothing, but ideally you would have a service page per keyword. So she's one of the bigger ones. Like you want to have a page just for brake repair. You want to have a page just for engine repair, page just for oil change. Kind of just your, your go-to bread and butters. You want to have a page for those. And then again, optimize around the keywords for those. Because again, you cannot optimize one page to be for a hundred different keywords or even 10 different services like that. That's really hard to rank well for each and every one. Um, and so you want building unique pages for each separate word is really beneficial. So again, each service, and if um, you have multiple locations in multiple cities, you want to make sure that it even is even for each city. So optimize your website for user experience, optimize for SEO. That's the on-site stuff. And then building authority offsite. So onsite and offsite should go hand in hand in terms of how you do your SEO. It should not just be one or the other. Particularly, I've seen um, a lot of people just have the onsite stuff, but then the offsite stuff just tends to not happen as much. And then you want to make sure you're tracking, um, tracking your results, what's going on, how things are improving. Because if you're not understanding how things are improving, then you don't even know if you are doing well or not. So you want to make sure you're tracking it. So I was going to go over some live examples just to give you, um, you all an idea of kind of some of the things we have done and to show you at least what I've explained works and it, it will help you start ranking towards the top of Google and the maps and in the organic area. And so here we have um, one of the shops we help. Um, we just step in transmission shop, Lionel Lakes, where they are based. You can see here they're in the top three of the maps, the top spot to be exact. And then a big factor is because they rank top, top spot organically. So those things have gone hand in hand to rank well there. And then they had a, they have another, another location there in Wyoming, right up the road. And so we did, I just typed in brake repair um, for that as a particular service. But again, that's a really good service in terms of arrow and um, buyer intent. And so here you see again, ranked well, um, in the organic rank at the top of the maps. And in this case, I know there's been a question before on if I have multiple locations, should I build multiple websites or should I have one website? You can honestly have both. If you're going to have everything on one website though, that's where you need multiple pages that are describing the type of services that you do in each in different, each different location. Um, so that's where typically I, I've seen also 
like if you're purchasing an existing business and you're keeping that one totally fine to keep that website but then optimize it and then with branding you can link design aesthetic to be similar but then um keep the kind of that business website separate because then you can really optimize well for that as well so I mean, i've seen it both ways um if i had to say one over the other i'd probably say having a website for each location is a little bit more beneficial just in terms of timing of being able to rank better in the long run for each location but i've, I've also seen it work really well where if you have have one page for multiple locations but then you have it really built out well in terms of how that spread happens So one more here, just auto repair in Austin. And so it's hard typing in auto repair Austin because it's so big. You're not going to cover the whole area and be and, and no one is Austin has so many shops. And so this is where one of our shops, um, Juke Auto here, uh, we just type it in my zip just to make sure that the best in the zip here. And you can see here they're ranked at the top spot there. And so yeah, that's that's kind of a a fair amount of information but are there any takeaways questions um any thoughts that anyone wants to share no okay um awesome then i will this last this last little bit for um okay this is just on site awesome edition a little bit more in detail i won't, won't go too too deep into there i think we kind of addressed all all these elements, unique content. I think I don't, I didn't um, touch on that a little bit, um, but you want to make sure that if you're using a website developer or marketing team, that the content on your page is unique um, compared to some of the other ones that they're helping you. They're not, hopefully they're not just copy and pasting content to each of the, each of the pages. Cause that again, you, you want to build trust with Google and you, you want to be unique. And so that's where you, hopefully they're writing unique content for each page. It can be similar. That's totally fine. But again, you don't want to be verbatim word for word of what's happening, but they're just replacing your business name and the location. So make sure that those, those elements are optimized there. Um, and then some of the, some of the most important keywords, if you want this list, feel free to reach out to me, but here again, some of the most important keywords to rank, um, for within, within your location. Um, a lot of these I'm, I'm sure you expected. Um, also, if you throw in the keyword with your city name, both in the front and in the back of it, you'll see different search volumes, figure out what's working best. So yeah, other, there's many different ways to rank for um, different keywords in, in your area. And then off, off page SEO, um, claim and optimize your Google business profile. That's a must, citations, reviews, backlinks, kind of all those elements that we talked about there. Strategic content syndication, um, that's a, a little bit more technical. So one, one thing that we do is we, we create a blog in what we call a media room, and then we syndicate that and we blast it out to different news outlets or things where you're able to put almost like a blog post on their website. And so that creates trust and power within, within the website itself and within the, the rankings. And so you wanna make sure that um, something like this is, is being done to develop your, your backlinks the, the right way. And then your Google, your Google business profile, as I mentioned, it's really important to rank well. And so if you want a, like a free test of how you're doing, then I'm absolutely happy to run this for you. So this is a, a geo grid map of a shop. And so typically for the keyword of auto repair. And so here in the middle of the shop is where they would be residing and then each bubble will be a mile apart. So giving you a three mile radius around the shop. And then it shows where they're appearing in the maps on average for that keyword. And so if someone's standing outside the shop and type in auto repair, this will saying that they weren't even in the top 20 and within a mile, they're not in the top 20 for some reason, two miles away, they had a few lingering tens and twelves, but usually the leading indicator is closer to the shop. And so this was performing poorly. And then after being optimized, you can see here are a lot more green ones and twos and threes. Um, ranking better for um, a good keyword for themselves, really, again, helping the phone ring a lot more often. And so um, if you're wanting a free checklist, um, just go to this website, go.liftautorepairmarketing.com slash marketing checklist. Here, again, you'll find all the go-to things that you want to make sure is done 
in terms of your website, your Google business listing, um, Google Maps, kind of everything across the board, making sure that that's done and taken care of um, for yourself to check those off. And then free SEO review, like I mentioned, um, will kind of analyze everything. You'll have that geo-grid map of yourself to see how you're ranking compared to your peers in your local area and making sure certain things are done that you're going to be the best in the area for the long term and, and really building that legacy for yourself in, in that area. And so if you're interested in doing that, give me a call, 877-733-3446, or you can um, visit our website and, and go to liftallrepairmarketing.com slash schedule. And so again, I appreciate you all here. Last chance, any questions, thoughts um, while you are live with me, I'm again, happy to answer anything anyone may have. Awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate you, you all joining me today. And um, if you can, you can find me on, on Facebook, you can find me on the, through uh, our, our scheduling on the email. You can call, they'll, they'll reach directly to me. You can even text that number if you're more comfortable doing that. Um, again, happy to help um, the industry as much as, as much as we, we possibly can, but I appreciate all of your time. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so that you don't miss any of our new and latest webinars as well as um, some of the podcast interviews that we do with some other shop owners and um, kind of lending their, their wisdom and knowledge and what's helped them get to success. And so again, appreciate all your time and take care and talk to you guys later.